Hey there, financial explorers. Today, we're breaking down some key financial concepts that are essential for anyone looking to level up their financial literacy. These concepts are like your trusty compass guiding you through the twists and turns of the financial landscape. Ever wondered what your net worth really means? Or how inflation can sneakily eat away at your purchasing power? We've got you covered. Welcome back to Everyday Elevate, your go-to destination for all things personal and professional growth. Today, we're diving into the world of financial concepts. Now let's jump into today's episode and level up our financial knowledge together. 1. Net Worth Let's start with net worth. It's a measure showing the financial value of individuals or businesses. It's calculated by subtracting liabilities from assets. For companies, it's a crucial gauge of financial health. But it's not just for corporations. It's used to assess individuals, sectors, and even nations. Net worth, also known as book value or shareholders' equity, can be positive or negative. A positive net worth means assets exceed liabilities, signaling financial health. Conversely, a negative net worth indicates liabilities outweigh assets, requiring attention. High net worth individuals have notably positive net worth, reflecting substantial financial prosperity. 2. Inflation represents the gradual erosion of purchasing power inherent in a currency over time, characterized by a sustained uptick in the prices of goods and services. As these costs escalate, the ability of currency to procure the same quantity of items diminishes, effectively reducing its purchasing power. It's imperative for professionals to monitor whether their income adjustments align proportionately with inflation rates to ensure financial equilibrium. An increase in a nation's money supply often leads to inflation, but currency valuation is influenced by multiple factors. Financial analysts use metrics like CPI and WPI to measure inflation accurately. Despite drawbacks, inflation can benefit individuals and businesses with tangible assets by increasing their value. So, while it may raise daily expenses, it can also boost investment portfolios and tangible holdings. 3. Liquidity. This term essentially describes how easily you can access cash or convert assets into cold, hard money. Think of it as the speedometer for your financial flexibility. Cash reigns as the king of liquidity, being the most readily available asset. On the flip side, tangible assets like real estate tend to be less liquid. Selling property isn't as swift as swiping a debit card. It takes time to find the right buyer and close the deal. 4. Bear Market this phenomenon signifies a prolonged downturn in the stock market, characterized by high unemployment rates and a persistent decline in share prices. Despite its ominous connotations, a bear market presents astute investors with an opportunity to acquire stocks at discounted prices, anticipating a future market rebound. Overall, a bear market is a testament to the cyclical nature of financial markets, presenting both challenges and opportunities for investors to navigate with prudence and foresight. 5. Bull Market This phase in the financial landscape signifies a period of upward momentum, characterized by a surge in stock prices and a sustained decline in unemployment rates. Traditionally, a bull market serves as an indicator of a robust economy, although financial experts meticulously analyze various metrics to gauge the market's overall health. Within these bullish conditions, investors display a heightened appetite for securities, shaping an environment conducive to active trading and investment activity. Yet it's imperative to maintain a nuanced perspective. While bull markets exude optimism, the fluid nature of financial financial markets mandates a cautious approach. Indeed, markets are subject to perpetual flux, rendering both bull and bear markets transient phenomena. Therefore, it behooves us to exercise prudence and vigilance, recognizing that market dynamics can evolve unpredictably. In essence, navigating the complexities of bull markets demands a blend of astuteness and adaptability in the pursuit of long-term financial success. 6. Risk Tolerance Now, for the concept of risk tolerance a crucial facet of investment strategy. Essentially, risk tolerance delineates the degree of uncertainty an individual is willing to embrace in their investment ventures. It serves as a barometer of one's comfort level amid the undulating tides of economic fluctuations, including the tumultuous waters of a bear market. Investors exhibit varying degrees of risk tolerance, manifesting in divergent approaches to investment decisions. Those endowed with a high risk tolerance often gravitate towards ventures characterized by elevated stakes and potential short-term gains. Conversely, individuals with a penchant for prudence, bolstered by a low-risk tolerance, tend to opt for long-term investments, prioritizing stability over immediate returns. Moreover, it's pertinent to note that risk tolerance is not a static parameter, but rather a dynamic construct shaped by multifarious factors. 
Age, for instance, exerts a discernible influence. Younger investors, endowed with ample time horizons, may adopt a more adventurous stance in pursuit of lucrative returns over the long haul. Furthermore, considerations extend beyond age, with socioeconomic factors such as net worth and disposable income contributing to the calculus of risk tolerance. Those blessed with substantial resources may be emboldened to embrace greater investment risks, leveraging their financial cushion to weather potential downturns. 7. Simple Interest Simple interest keeps things clear and straightforward. It's the type of interest calculated solely on the original amount of a loan or the initial deposit into a savings account. Unlike compound interest, which grows over time, simple interest sticks to the basics. For borrowers, simple interest means knowing precisely what they owe beyond the initial amount, while lenders can predict their earnings without the added complexity of compounding. Calculating simple interest is pretty straightforward. You just multiply the annual interest rate as a decimal by the number of years the loan lasts, then multiply that by the original amount. This gives you the total interest for the specified period. 8. Compound interest Compound interest, unlike simple interest, considers both the principal amount and accumulated interest, making it akin to a snowball rolling down a hill, gaining momentum as it accumulates. For example, with $100 at 10% compound interest, you earn $10 interest in the first year, totaling $110. In the second year, you earn $11 interest, totaling $121, as interest builds on the initial amount plus previous interest. This compounding effect grows your investment over time, making compound interest a potent tool for wealth building, whether for savings or investments. 9. Capital Asset Pricing Model or CAPM The Capital Asset Pricing Model or CAPM serves as a GPS for investors, guiding them toward optimal investment decisions based on expected return rates. It analyzes the relationship between risks and expected returns, acting as a roadmap in the complex terrain of investment choices, especially in stocks. In corporate finance, CAPM is a go-to model for evaluating investments, akin to a trusty compass aligning with organizational goals. For investors, CAPM is a game-changer, helping gauge expected returns and the worthiness of investments. Whether a financial expert or a novice investor, CAPM is a valuable tool to have in your arsenal. 10. Depreciation Depreciation, a must-know tool in finance, helps track the decline in value of tangible assets over time. Picture this, as assets like property, plants, and equipment PPE, get used or face technological shifts, their value dwindles. Accountants dive in, calculating depreciation rates to give businesses a clear view of asset value. Why does it matter? Well, analyzing depreciation is like checking a company's machinery pulse. It reveals how well assets are holding up and contributing to profits. And when it comes to crunching numbers, there's no one-size-fits-all method. From straight line to declining balance, each method has its perks. So whether you're a seasoned accountant or just curious about business finances, understanding depreciation is a vital skill in the financial world. 11. Amortization Amortization is a key financial tool for debt management. It involves gradually reducing the value of intangible assets or debts over time. Similar to depreciation for tangible assets, it ensures costs are spread evenly over their useful lifespan. Financial pros use amortization for better planning and budgeting, aiding debt repayment. Lenders rely on amortization schedules for detailed repayment plans, promoting disciplined debt management. It's not just about debt. Amortization helps forecast expenses and make informed decisions on resource allocation, making it crucial for effective finance management and planning. 12. Credit is a vital aspect of modern finance, enabling transactions and economic activities. It allows obtaining goods, services, or funds with the commitment to repay later, often with interest. It involves a contractual agreement between a lender and a borrower commonly known as purchasing on credit. Credit takes various forms, including loans, mortgages, and lines of credit, tailored to different needs. In financial accounting, credit signifies either a reduction in assets or an increase in liabilities, offering insights into an organization's financial standing. Understanding credit is crucial for individuals and businesses to navigate borrowing and financial management effectively. As we wrap up our journey through these fundamental financial concepts, remember that knowledge is power. Whether you possess extensive experience in investment or are embarking on your initial foray into the realm of finance, 
Comprehending these concepts can significantly impact your financial trajectory. So keep exploring, keep learning, and don't forget to apply what you've learned to your own financial decisions. And hey, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to stay updated on our latest uploads. Stay tuned for more empowering discussions on Everyday Elevate, where we elevate your everyday financial knowledge.